Okay, so Windows 10 might not be around forever since Microsoft is ending their support for it ahead of the Windows 11 launch. But if you're like me and plan on using Windows 10 until it's no longer possible, then great, I'll show you how to set up a VPN. I'm pretty sure the process will be very similar for Windows 11, so I'm not too worried. But if there are any new processes, I'll be sure to update you guys. So there are a lot of VPNs out there, but my team and I have some recommendations that we've left in the links below. So using one of these for this example, after getting yourself a subscription plan, download and install the VPN and you'll either have a code or depending on which VPN you go for, uh, your credentials, your login credentials. So once you've logged in, the app will look something like this. If we go to the website, you can technically download the VPN before purchasing the subscription, but you won't have access to the app. So yeah, downloading it without having a subscription is kind of pointless. That's why it's best to get yourself a subscription and then download it to your device. So say I wanna to switch to a server in France. I'll search for France, click on on it, connect right here, and it says I'm connected. So if I wanna double check that, I can use any IP finder address just to confirm that my IP address now shows that I'm in France. From here, I can go to say Netflix and see that my whole library has changed and I can watch all sorts of new shows and movies that aren't available in my region. So it's pretty straightforward. Of course, people have been using VPNs for that for ages, as well as for things like accessing early game releases in different regions, protecting while torrenting, uh, checking out corners of the internet otherwise not accessible and maintaining anonymity in a world that always wants to harvest and sell your data. And not every VPN has the kind of obfuscation tech to completely obscure your info or even has enough countries to really make it worth it to use. But there are a few options that do while also having the performance and speed necessary to make it worthwhile. So that being said, my first recommendation is Express. Now Express is considered one of the best VPNs on the market and for good reason, because first of all, they genuinely can't really store any of your info or data on their RAM only servers. And they regularly get audited to test and prove that their servers are secure. So all of that means that they really prioritize the privacy of their users. Not only that, but Express performs extremely well with its high speeds and its smooth interface being the fastest to start up and connect out of every other VPN. The reason it functions so smoothly is because they don't place a lot of emphasis on features that might take up some of the processing power of the app. But what they do is optimize their servers to help maintain strong, secure, and fast connections so you don't have to configure many settings. I mean, overall, the program feels super integrated as opposed to like a big, clunky, slow one. If you prefer to have control over minute settings or want to configure features for each specific activity that you're doing, then NordVPN has all that. The reason why they're on this list is because they're comparable to Express in terms of speed and performance, all while giving you a bunch of options to play around with to give you the feeling of customizing your experience. So take MeshNet, for example. This is a feature that lets you take your own private network, meaning you can create a kind of sub network with people or devices of your choice under NordVPN's inscription protection. Nord also has a dedicated IP address so that you get the same unique IP address on their network instead of a revolving door of IP addresses every time you open the app. That may or may not be useful to you, but if you have a crypto account in a certain location and your crypto app needs to know it's you every time, it might come in handy. Even the threat protection feature is nice if you're someone who torrents and want to prevent the incessant pop-ups and malware that come with the territory. So most of these features might be useful to you, but we have a full review on Nord in the description below if you want every detail. But those are the highlights, along with the fact that Nord is really trying to make sure that they have as many countries and servers as possible. So for comparison, Express has over 3,000 servers running in 105 countries, but Nord has over 7,800 servers in 165 countries now which is significantly more. The number 7,800 doesn't necessarily mean all those servers are gonna work perfectly every time, but it does give you more options. I would still say that 3,000 servers is probably more than enough overall though. There's also Surfshark, which is kind of like Nord in that they have features to offer. And along with both Nord and Express, Surfshark has the security and anonymity required to obfuscate your data and important functions like a kill switch to make sure that you're only connected to the internet if your VPN is on, if necessary. I wouldn't say Surfshark performs with the same power as the other two. It's a little bit slower according to our testing, but it doesn't mean it's not worth it. Firstly, it's the cheapest out of the three on this list. And you only need one subscription to cover any device you have. So from your phone to your laptop, to your Xbox, 
to your friends' phones, etc. Like, theoretically, it could work out dirt cheap if you split it. So really, it's kind of worth it. Of course, this all depends on what you're looking for from your VPN to begin with. So if you're in or going to a highly censored country, your choice of VPN will definitely matter here. Express always works great. Nord can be iffy, but it depends where. And Surfshark has a no borders feature to help protect you. So really, it depends on what you need a VPN for overall. Either way, you'll be good to go with any of these VPNs in terms of security, performance, and the amount of servers and options to choose from. You don't have to commit right away to any of them. You can even just try them out with their 30 day money back guarantees. But myself and so many others have found that each of these particular VPNs are super useful. Like, I use my Express all the time when I want to get access to Japanese or Korean content, which is not available where I live, or when I want to game in a different lobby with different players elsewhere, you name it. So what I'll do for you is leave full reviews in the description along with some discounts so that you can get any of these VPNs for even cheaper. So that's pretty much it for today. If you're having any issues setting up your VPN on your Windows, just leave your questions in the comments and I will be happy to help you out. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.